Welcome to the topic of simple harmonic motion. Um, this is a key part of Unit 4, um, quite a big section. In the first little bit here we're going to look for the definition of what simple harmonic motion means and we're going to look at how displacement and time are related in a system which is undergoing simple harmonic motion. Just a few things that we need, a bit of vocabulary we need to use to discuss this. So we've got displacement. Displacement is the distance from an origin. We've got the amplitude. So in an oscillation, the maximum displacement is the amplitude. We've got the frequency, the number of oscillations per second. And we've got the period, which is the time for one oscillation. It's really important you're clear on these terms because um, we need to use these quite a lot in order to derive the things that we're doing in this unit. OK, if we just go back in time a little bit, think about what we know about uh, equations to which is to do with things moving. Maybe in year eight you started off with speed equals distance divided by time. right? Sometimes you ignore this at the time, but you, what you're working out there is an average speed. Obviously, if it's a constant speed, that's fair enough. But if something's changing its speed, all you're doing is working out the average speed by doing the total distance divided by the total time. Then in year 10 or year 11, you got onto the idea of acceleration and working out change in velocity over time. So you could say that um, if something's speeding up, you can work out the acceleration. Um, and then we did this, what they call the SUVA equations, the equations of constant acceleration. So this is the next kind of level of complexity where we've got constant acceleration. So we did a S equals UT plus half AT squared and all those equations. Well, in year 13, in unit 4, then we have to consider a situation where the acceleration is not constant. Right, this is quite crucial here because some people are still trying to use these kind of equations. That's not going to work because these are the equations of constant acceleration. And in simple harmonic motion, the um, acceleration is not constant. It varies during the oscillation. So the simplest system we can have in simple harmonic motion is if the acceleration is proportional to the displacement and in the opposite direction. This is a really important definition you need to understand every part of this. Okay, so what we've got here is a system, the springs bouncing up and down, a spring uh, with the mass on it is an example of simple harmonic motion. All the time the mass is below the center here, it's accelerating upwards, okay? So its displacement is downwards, the acceleration is upwards. If it's above the line, it's accelerating downwards. Okay, hopefully you're clear on this, but just to be sure, as it goes upwards, it's passing the line going upwards, but remember, passing the line going upwards, it's slowing down and then speeding up downwards. So it's always accelerating in a downwards direction. Okay, and then beyond that, that acceleration, because the spring is getting more and more squashed if it's above or more and more stretched if it's below, the force is increasing, therefore the acceleration is increasing. So it works out because with a spring that the force is proportional to the change in length, then we can say that the acceleration will also therefore be proportional to the displacement but also in the opposite direction. Okay, the thing that makes simple harmonic motion so important um, is that the period is not affected by the amplitude. Okay, we'll come back to talking about that later, but if you pull the spring different distances you'll still end up with the same um, time for one oscillation if you've got the same spring and the same mass. Okay, that becomes quite important later. So, um, our second objective here was to look at the displacement time graph. So here's my uh, mass on a spring. If that mass traces a graph, so we can see the displacement against time, that graph goes something like this. Okay, what we need to be able to do is to work out the equation of this line. Okay, so I'm going to go through some steps which explain why the equation of that line is what it is, which allow us to work out what the displacement will be after any amount of time after the oscillation starts. Okay, it's a specific example here. Let's just put some numbers in, maybe to make it a bit easier. Suppose the, the amplitude is 5 meters and the frequency is 0 0.5 hertz. That means it's going to take two seconds to do one oscillation. So here we go again, just with some numbers in. So there's our graph. There's our amplitude, 5. Remember going down to minus 5. Okay, here's our period, 2 seconds for one complete oscillation there. So another oscillation in 4 seconds and the final oscillation there in 6 seconds. So three oscillations overall in 6 seconds. In terms of amplitude, frequency and time, can we work out an equation for this line? Well, 
The first thing you might notice about that is it looks a bit like a cosine curve. So if we plotted x, x equals cos theta, that would give us this cosine curve starting from 1, coming back up to 1 at 2 pi radians. Okay, For all this, as you'll see, we're working in radians. Okay, But we didn't start from 1, we started from 5 because that was the amplitude. So the first step is just to multiply this by the amplitude, so 5 in our uh, numerical example. So if we plot a graph of x equals a cos theta where a is the amplitude, that gives us a graph with a correct amplitude up to 5 down to minus 5 because the maximum value that cos theta can have is 1, so we've got 5 times 1, and the minimum value is 5 times minus 1. Okay, but we didn't have theta on the horizontal axis, we had time, so we need some kind of equation with time in, um, where we're going to multiply time by some constant that we'll work out in a minute. So we now write this equation as x equals a cos kt, but the one thing we know about um, this is that if kt, kt must be 2 pi because that's going to give us back to the start again when t, the time that's passed, is equal to the period of oscillation. Okay, so kt equals 2 pi, um, that gives us k equals 2t, uh, sorry, 2 pi divided by t. So now our equation becomes x equals a cos 2 pi over big T, the period, times the small time, that's the time that's actually elapsed in this oscillation since you started. But we also know f equals 1 over t, so I can get that 1 over t there, make it a bit tidier by putting an f on the top. So the equation linking displacement x with time t is x equals a cos 2 pi f t. I'm hoping here the 2 pi is going to be a nice alarm for you to say you must have your calculator in radians to make that equation work.